showing you in Excel how to plot multiple gradients to find uh, multiple lines on a graph to find the gradient based on uh, the uncertainty in your error bars. Um, so here's my data. I bounced a ball, and the ball was different temperatures, and these are the uh, these are the results. Uh, this is too much data to graph. So the first thing that I need to do is I need to calculate an average. Uh, mean rebound height in meters. Um, and so I'm just going to get Excel to do that for me. Equals starts a uh, starts an equation, and I'm just going to use average. Average is mean uh, in Excel, so I'm just going to take an average of those four. And then uh, I'm going to drag this square in the bottom right hand corner down to uh, to cover all of those cells. And now it's calculating an average right the way across the board. So. Um, the next thing that I'm going to do is I need to uh, work out what my uncertainty is. Now, there's several different ways of working out what uncertainty is, but uh, you can either use the standard deviation or the absolute mean, the mean absolute deviation. Um, I'm just going to use the standard deviation in here. Um, so uh, I'm going to say equals STDEV, uh, which is standard deviation, and then I want the standard deviation of my four trials, not the mean because that's not included. Um, and that gives us the uncertainty value there. Um, the next thing, remember you can't quote your uncertainty to more than uh, two significant figures. Uh, one is ideal, but two is okay. So I'm going to use these buttons up here to decrease the decimal places. And I'm going to take it down to two because these, there's quite a lot of variation there between 13 and 70 or 0 0.06. Um, and 0 0.017, uh, and they would both be, I think that wouldn't be represented fairly if I did uh, just one significant figure. So I'm going to leave that as two significant figures. Um, so that's my uncertainty, so that would be the, the, the plus or minus, that's the height of my error bar. So the net, then I'm going to plot a graph, I'm going to highlight the temperature, and then I'm going to hold command on my Mac or control on my uh, PC, and uh, select the other thing that I want to plot, which is this, um, and then I'm going to say insert, and I'm going to go to a scatter chart, which is this one down here. Okay, no lines for now. So there we there we've got our data. Now there's not much on there. There's a title which doesn't really mean anything, so I'm going to change that first of all. The effect of temperature of a ball on its rebound height. Um, and then uh, I'm going to, I need to label my axes. So the things, the way that I label things and add things to the graph in Excel is I go up here to add chart element. I'm in my chart design menu here, and I'm going to go add chart element. Um, I want to add my axes titles, first of all. Um, and then I can type in here. So this one is the temperature. In degree C. And this one is my average rebound height in meters. Okay, uh, the next thing that I want to do is I want to add in some more grid lines here to make it look a bit better. So I'm going to add in some primary minor grid lines on both axes. There we go. Um, Next thing that I want to do really is I want to change these from circles. Um, Excel and Sheets and most other things, um, they uh, they always use circles and I don't really know why because it's very difficult to tell exactly what a point is if you've just got a circle. So I'm going to double click on my series um, and I should get a format data series menu up here. Um, if you've double clicked and you've only got one, uh, one, one point highlighted, just click off and click click once off and click once back on again and you should be able to get the, 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 the whole series. Um, I'm going to go to this this paintbrush here which is kind of the formatting of it. I'm going to click marker because that's what I want um, and then marker options and I'm going to go built in and that enables me to change that to an X like that. Okay I want it to be a bit bigger so I can see um, so I can change the size there as well. Okay so now I've got my points uh, the next thing that I want to do, uh, this is starting to look uh, starting to look better, but the next thing that I want to do is add chart element and I want to add a, a trend line. So it looks like a linear set of data, so I'm going to add a linear trend line. Now again, I've no idea why it puts a dotted line on. I'm going to 
click on the trend line and it will bring up the format trend line menu here. Um, I want it to be a uh, on a sideline doesn't work, I'm going to go automatic and then uh, the dash type is somewhere. Here's dash type, so I'm just going to change that to solid. Um, I'm going to make it a bit thinner. Um, and that's starting to look like a, like a decent graph. Um, the other thing that you can do here is you can uh, you can extend the, the, the line beyond the uh, beyond the points that you've that you've plotted. Uh, and that's in, in this uh, the three like the bar chart logo and the forecast. So you can forecast it forward. I'm going to forecast it forward by ten, uh, and I'm going to forecast it backwards by ten as well. Okay, uh, actually I'm going to forecast it backwards by eight because it's it doesn't go below the x-axis. Okay, so. Uh, we've got uh, the option here to display the equation on the chart, which is a good idea because usually in these sort of charts you're going to want the gradient or the, the intercept because you want to feed that into your theory. Um, so I would display the equation on the chart. Um, and if you want to adjust the angle a little bit, you can set the intercept, but I'm not going to do that here. Okay, so now I've got a, a reasonably good looking graph. The next thing that I need to do is add error bars. So I'm going to add error bars more error bars options because we don't really want any of these things because the standard deviation even though we calculated that it's only going to give us the standard deviation of the data in the graph so only the mean rebound height standard deviation which is useless for us so then i'm going to go more error bars options obviously it's going to stick on some crazy ones here um, and so then i want to uh, i've got the vertical error bar here uh, which is the uncertainty and the average rebound height which is the one that we've calculated here so I'm going to go custom, specify value, and then I'm going to say the positive error value is, and then if you've got this, this, this highlighted here, all you need to do is just highlight those. And then you're going to do the same for the negative error bar and just highlight those. And then we're going to go OK. And it's going to give us these values here as the error bars vertically. OK. Um, the, temp the uncertainty for the temperature, which I haven't included in this graph, uh, let's say that that's just one degree. Um, so for the horizontal error bars, if you can, you can try and click on the horizontal error bars. Sometimes it can be quite difficult. Um, so I'm going to see if I can zoom in here. Okay, it's, it's showing me just the, the point. It thinks I'm trying to click on the point because the points are so big, so I'm just going to make the markers really small just so I can click on the uh, so I can click on the error bar. There. Did I get it? Yes, format error bars. Okay, so here we've got, uh, I think, hopefully, I've got the horizontal error bar menu here. Yeah, because I've clicked on the horizontal error bar now. And fixed value, I'm going to go fixed value. Okay, it's already on one, so I'm going to change that to two. Okay, um, so then I'm gonna uh, I'm gonna try and make those uh, those points a little bit bigger, but now I can't do that. Fabulous! I'm just gonna leave them as it is. So now I've got my error bars as my points, but that's fine. Okay, so now I'm gonna zoom out again so I can see what's going on. Oh, too far! Whoa, way too far! Bear with me find my data again. Okay, that's better. Okay, so now I've got uh, I've got my graph and my, I've got my numbers. Uh, what I want to be able to do here is I want to be able to um, I want to be able to add multiple gradients. So I'm going to add uh, the max gradient here. And that's going to take two columns and then I'm going to add the min gradient. Yeah. We're going to start with the maximum gradient. And the maximum gradient is going to go from the bottom right-hand corner of this error box to the top left of this one. So for, for this error box, for the minus 10, um, the bottom left, the bottom right of it, sorry, uh, the bottom is going to be the, uh, the average rebound height minus the uncertainty. So the y value is going to be the average rebound height minus the uncertainty. And the, uh, the x value is going to be the temperature plus the uncertainty of the temperature, which I said was 2. So that's going to be equals that plus 2. Okay, 
Um, and then that maximum gradient is going to go right the way up to this 100 point, and it's going to be the top left of this box. So the top of this is going to be the, the y value uh, is going to be the um, mean rebound height plus the uncertainty. That will take us to the top of the error box. And we want to also be at the left of the error box, this top left corner here. So the left of the error box is the temperature at minus the uncertainty and the temperature which in this case is 2. Okay, so those are our coordinates for the maximum gradient. We're going to do the same thing for the minimum gradient, except there's going to be different points. So for the minimum gradient, we want the top left of this box, so we get the, uh, so we get the top from saying the uh, mean rebound height plus the uncertainty. We get the, uh, the left of it, um, the x value, the top left of this box, uh, by saying the temperature you can zoom out a little bit. The temperature minus the uncertainty, so minus two. And down here, we get the uh, the y value here for the hundred degree point. Uh, if it's the minimum gradient, it's going from the top left of this to the bottom right of this one. So the bottom right of this one, the y axis is given by um, the mean rebound height minus that, minus the uncertainty, and the x value, if we're going for the bottom right of this, then we want the temperature plus the uncertainty of the temperature, which equals 100 plus 2, which gives us that. Okay, now we need to plot these on these same axes. So, to do that, we want to right-click on the graph and go select data. Okay? So this is selecting the data source. Now we've got all the stuff that's already in here. I'm going to add a new entry here. So I'm going to add something called series two, which I'm going to call the max gradient. And then I'm going to add another one called the min gradient. Okay, now we'll go back to the max gradient. The max gradient, the x values are these two values here. And the y values are these two values here. And then we go to min gradient and we go x values are these two values here. Let's try that again. Min gradient is these two values here, x, and the y values are these two values here for y. And then we go OK. Okay, and now we've got our points there at the top and the bottom of these error boxes, but what they don't have is trend lines. So what we need to do is we need to go to those points, and we need to go to chart design, add chart element, trend line, linear, and that will put that trend line in there. Um, again, we've got the annoying dots, so we can change those by doing exactly the same thing again. Um, and we can also change the line settings. We can't because it's not letting us. Um, there we go, the line, and we change the dash type. And there we go, there's that one. And then we're going to do the same for those orange points. If I can manage to click on them, let's move the equation. Okay, add chart element, grid lines, oh, not grid lines, trend line, linear and then click on the trend line, change it from dash type to solid, and then we can hopefully click on the points, marker, marker options, built in, change that to an X as well. Okay, and there you have a graph with multiple gradients, bearing in mind exactly where the uncertainty lies, and you've got the multiple gradients, and you can go onto these trend lines again, and you can add in the equations on the chart for these, probably best to, uh, to keep them in the right locations now. Um, and we can add the equations on here for each one of these. And that will give us our three gradients. So that will give us the minimum gradient, the maximum gradient, and the best fit gradient. And so you can work out your overall uncertainty of your gradient.